Hey guys, Dr. Gunnan here to talk about bivariate regression. And in this video, I'll show you how to perform a regression analysis in three different ways in Excel. Now, the file that I'll be working off of can be found down in the description below this video. So go ahead and click on that link, download it and follow along with me. Now, regression analyses are very convenient, especially when you have one variable that's hard to measure or expensive or um, time consuming and another variable that's highly correlated with it that might be easier to measure. Now in this example, uh, we'll be looking at sprint time and jump height. And the context here is that perhaps you are a coach or a strength and conditioning coach and, and it's easy for you to gather um, jump heights. You can do it right before practice or right before a lift, but sprint time on a track with the timing gates and keeping it consistent and reliable from time point to time point, maybe from week to week, is difficult just by yourself. But it's easy for you to collect jump heights. So your plan then is to uh, collect sprint and jump data from a group of athletes, to run a regression analysis, create a regression equation, and then use that as a prediction equation to predict sprint time from jump height. Okay, let's dive right into it. Now here we are in the data set and you'll notice right away we have, uh, let's see, 47 athletes and they all did a vertical jump and a 30 meter sprint. Now the first thing we want to do is just figure out the correlation right off the bat. So we've done work with correlations before and if you haven't seen that video, you can check it out. I'll link to it somewhere on the screen or in, in the uh, description. We type in Corel and it asks for two arrays and we'll just give it both sets of data from each variable separated by a comma. So I just click at the top, command, shift, down arrow to grab that whole column, close the parentheses and hit enter. And it looks like we have a strong negative correlation of negative 0.8. So that's the Pearson R correlation coefficient. Now what this tells us is that these two variables would be a great candidate for running a regression analysis to create a regression equation or a prediction equation. Now the first method we'll use is based on scatter plots. So let's highlight all of our data, go to insert, and we can either go here to scatter plot or we can go to recommended chart types and you see right there a scatter plot. So let's just grab that. And perfect, we can see that jump height, I'm just gonna move this up a little bit. There we go we can see that jump height is on the X axis and sprint time is on the Y axis. And we can see that downward trend as you jump higher, you also sprint faster. Remember that a faster sprint time is a lower number in seconds. Let's first adjust these axes. So we double click on the axis and let's go for the lower or for the minimum for this X axis, let's put it at 0.2. And for the Y axis, let's set it to 3.5. And that seems to, oops, there we go. And that seems to frame our data a little bit better. Now, all we need to do is make sure that we have our chart highlighted, go to add chart element, down to trend line, and click on linear. Now doing so will give us a line of best fit. And remember, a line of best fit is the line that minimizes the residuals between or the error between the points and the line. The next step is to double click on this line and it brings up some options. Now we wanna go down and check the box next to display equation on chart. And we can also display the R squared value. So let's grab these and bring them to the top just so they're easier to read. And I actually wanna make them bigger too. So I'll highlight it and increase the font size to 12. Okay, so this should look familiar now. We have the equation for a line, y equals negative 3.7402 times x plus 5.8909. Now this should look familiar because this is also the regression equation. So here 5.89 is the y-intercept and negative 3.74 is the slope of the line. So there it is, the regression equation as well as the coefficient of determination R squared. Now I'm gonna show you the second way to run a regression analysis. Now the second way is actually using these functions 
slope and intercept. So let's see if it matches up with the first way. I'm going to move this over and let's just label these. Now we're going to use the slope function. We'll, we'll type equals S L O P open parentheses. And it's asking us for the known Y's and then the known X's. So we have to make sure that we put these in in order. Now our Y in this case is going to be the sprint time. So let's highlight all of those comma. And then it asks us for the known X's and we grab all of those close the parentheses and hit enter. And look at that, our slope is negative 3.74 and that matches up with what we have here on the graph. To calculate the intercept, we type equals intercept, open parentheses, and it's the same uh, pattern here. So we grab the Y's and then we grab the X's, close the parentheses and hit enter and there's our y-intercept. All right, so that was way number two. Now way number three is to use the data analysis tool pack. If you don't have that installed, I've shown you on a previous video, um, you just have to go to preferences if you're on a Mac and just you know tick the little box next to it. So we go up to data here, there's my data analysis tool pack, and I want to go to regression, click okay, and it asks us for the y's and the x's. So here are the Y's and I'm grabbing the label as well because if I check the label box, then that just tells Excel what to label everything as. So I'll check the label box right there. The constant is not zero, so I'm not gonna check that. If we want it to generate a 95% confidence interval or a 90% or a 99%, that's where we input it. Okay, and then we want to make sure that it outputs this in the same workbook so we check this little dot right there, click here, and then tell Excel where you want it to spit out the information. And let's see, let's do it over here next to our graph. And now I'll click OK. And look at this, we get all of this information. Let's make sure that it lines up with what we've already calculated. So here's the multiple R. This is essentially how well does this uh, regression model fit the data. And the multiple R is 0.838, and it should just be the absolute value of the correlation coefficient between these two uh, variables, and it is. It's the absolute value of the correlation. R squared, uh, 0.703, and we look over here to our graph, and yep, the coefficient of determination is 0.703. Now if we go down to the intercepts, we see that the intercept is 5.89, that matches up, and then the jump height coefficient, or the slope of the line, is negative 3.74. We also get a p-value and our confidence intervals. So look, the p-value is significant at the level of p's less than 0.001, and we get a 95% confidence interval as well. So what this is saying is that the slope and intercept um, are between these two values, this lower and upper value, 95% of the time. Okay, that was the third way of running a regression analysis in Excel, but hold up, what we want to do now is figure out how to predict sprint time based on jump height. So let's set that up in Excel and test it out. So I'm just going to make a little table down here and we'll call this sprint time prediction. And we are going to take in a jump height and output a sprint time. Sprint time prediction. Okay, so the formula that I'll put in here is going to be the exact formula for our regression. So it's going to be equals negative 3.74 times 
the jump height, which we will put in this cell, I just haven't yet, plus the intercept of 5.89, and I hit enter. Now with jump height at zero, 5.89 is the predicted time that you will take to run 30 meters. Now we know that that's probably not correct. Like if you can't jump at all, you probably can't, you know, huff it down 30 meters and finish in under six seconds. But let's see what happens when we plug in a jump height, because this regression model was modeled after a group of athletes, not after the general population, which has much larger variance. So let's put in a jump height of 50 centimeters because jump height is in meters, which I should actually change up here. There we go. Because it's in meters, we have to put in 0.5 for 50 centimeters. Hit enter. And theoretically, an athlete who could jump 50 centimeters would run a four flat or roughly a four flat 30 meter sprint. And if we look here at the line of best fit, let's look out to 50 and up to the line. And it looks like we had a couple athletes right around uh, that 50 centimeter mark and they were running in the low fours. Let's say that this athlete improved their vertical jump by 10 centimeters. That's a big improvement to 0.6. Well, then based on this prediction model, they would also drop under four seconds for their 30 meter sprint down to 3.65. Okay, guys, so simple regression can be used in a lot of situations. And in the fields of sports science and strength and conditioning, it's particularly useful when you have a hard to measure value that correlates strongly with an easier to measure value. Now, if you wanna keep leveling up your stats game and kinesiology or just stats in general, or need to brush up on your anatomy or learn more about strength and conditioning, head over to the channel Maybe subscribe, consider subscribing, turning on notifications. Thanks for sticking around. See you guys on the next video.